this is Arthur on April 6 for a quick uh, Tezos dev update. So one work that's going on is a gasification of typing uh, in Tezos. So Mikkelsen um, is a, uh, as a smart contract language, has gas in the same way that the Ethereum heavy MS gas, and it's a way to account for the time a program takes to execute. And it's fairly rudimentary. Uh, we haven't exactly optimized um, the right ratios between how much uh, uh, a, uh, adding something on a pile versus um, uh, summing to, uh, to numbers might cost. But it, it, it's rough, and the point is right now to avoid DDoS. It's not to have an optimized gas price. So that's fine. But there's another aspect of it, which is the typing and deserialization. So when you load data uh, in Mikkelsen from the storage, it's, it's typed data, it's encoded. It's not just uh, bits from memory. And so you have to pay a cost for um, the deserialization that goes on and the retyping of the program. Now that happens every time uh, you run a program and that part was not instrumented. So uh, Benjamin has been working on uh, on this aspect of gas calculation. And uh, in addition to that, uh, we're also pushing for a change in the Mikkelsen calling convention. So let me give you a little bit of history on that. In the original very uh, first version of Mikkelsen, when a contract was calling another contract, it would just look like a function call. Like in the middle of your Mikkelsen code, you would call out to another contract, you would do some calculation, and then re-enter. Now, the advantage of this model is that it's very intuitive, and it, if, if, if you're writing function, and so it's, it's, it's very easy to write a program like this. However, it has security risks, which are very not intuitive. Um, and the, the DAO hack, for example, was a uh, re-entrancy bug, and it can be difficult. So, um, we had um, we, we had uh, looked at how to avoid uh, this type of reentrancy bugs, and the compromise that uh, there is currently in Mikkelsen is that you cannot call another contract unless you've already packed your state. So you have to basically do all the house cleaning, all the housekeeping, which is where the bugs could happen if you forgot to do it before calling anything else. It's fairly restrictive. It means that you cannot call. Uh, you cannot uh, call transfer uh, tokens from a Lambda expression. And there, on top of that, there's already compilers which will pack the state for you uh, and let you um, get around that. So we have a stronger um, version of that calling convention that we want to deploy. And the idea is that instead of thinking, you don't think of it as a contract call anymore. There's no call. What happens is this transfer token function is just going to return to you um, a value, which is a transaction. And so you can create these transactions as you go, but only at the end of this of your contract, you're going to produce a list of outside transactions. And these outside tra transactions could be you know, transactions to another contract containing data, but it could also be operations to change data gates, um, to originate contracts. All of these operations uh, essentially come in a list. And that list, um, instead, of a, uh, instead of a stack, if it were a function call, this is actually a... Um, a first in, first out uh, type of list. So you just produce all these operation, and then um, they will be executed one by one. So what this changes mostly is there's no return value. Like you should not call a contract and expect it to return something. Now that might seem odd because isn't the whole point of causing the contract to get a value? Well, not really. Um, there are some library contracts which do that, but we have another way of doing uh, libraries in Tezos. Uh, which is sharing uh, which is sharing code. But in most cases, when you're sending a transaction to a contract, you don't really want a value from them. What you really want is to um, is to have some effect on them. Most of the time is just sending them tokens or, or, or writing something. Now in a few cases where you do want to get a return value, you can still do that. Essentially, um, you have to provide some callback information to the other contract and the other contract needs to have logic to do so. And so this is, in, in some sense, a less, um, so it is just as powerful as a, uh, as a call model. You can implement uh, everything you would, um, that you, you, you can implement everything you'd like to implement in this model um, that you would implement with a call function model. However, unless the other contracts explicitly try to give you this type of facilities with callbacks, it's going to make your life a little harder. And the point of that is to make these reentrancy bugs very, very hard. And in general, in smart contract design, thinking of your transactions as really these things you output and you don't have that much control over, they're, you know, they're going to go and they're going to be executed and you shouldn't have some expectation on the order 
Now, there will be execution on the order just because of consensus algorithm, but you should not design your smart contract based on the execution, based on the assumption that transactions are going to be executed in a certain order. It makes programming a little trickier, but it also prevents you from shooting yourself in the foot in a lot of ways. Uh, another change that's uh, being merged is um, I've added a um, bindings for the um, SecP two fifty six K one library. So that's the um, that's a Bitcoin cur uh, that's a curve used by uh, by Bitcoin uh, for their elliptic curve signatures, and we've been using E two fifty five nineteen mostly because it's considered to be one of the cryptographic write answer. You know, if you're developing a signature algorithm, that's what you should use. However, there's such a huge ecosystem around the SecPy curves uh, and even hardware that there's a lot of people who have um, hardware related to this um, SecPy curve and who really wanted the ability to use those in Tezos. So um, what I did is essentially uh, pack them together so that there's a generic concept of a signature which can be made from one curve or the other, and it's transparent uh, at the protocol level. So the protocol can choose to do a signature in one or the other or accept both. So right now, the default is that uh, signatures from either curves are going to be accepted for transactions uh, and for baking and, uh, and, and for all of these. Uh, in the future, we might consider some uh, different costs in order to incentivize the use of ED25519, which is a little faster uh, and possibly better behaved. But it's, I think it's good to have choices. And uh, in fact, a suggestion which has been made, which I really like, is to add another curve, the SecP256R1, um, uh, SecP uh, and that one has a, um, th this is a, a curve that's implemented in the, uh, in the hardware enclaves uh, on iPhones and on Androids. And so uh, this would let you get uh, some um, like hardware wallet type of security on your phone uh, for these curves. So I think that's a pretty cool uh, option to have. I yet to uh, find a good library. And speaking of libraries for these curves, uh, so we've been moving to libraries that we were using, which was Lipsodium and then for a short period, Tweet and uh, SEL. And it's now all um, going to Hegelstar. So Hegelstar is a project to implement uh, cryptographic primitive in FSTAR, which is a uh, formally verified language. Uh, it's pretty close to a camel, but um, you can express uh, properties that you want to prove. Uh, and it's uh, a project that's uh, been uh, integrated in uh, Firefox lately. And so um, we're very glad that, that we're able to uh, integrate this code. I don't think that, you know, the security of Lipsodium is necessarily uh, something that I would, it's not something that I would worry about, but it's it's really great to start in, um, integrating formally verified code uh, in our dependencies. Documentation for RPCs. Uh, so that's on the uh, dark.zzalpha.net um, and it's generated from the code. So uh, if you're uh, programming uh, software to connect to a node, then you'll have more information here. And of course, a lot more tests uh, which are being added. I mentioned that we had some regressions bug before. And so this is very important uh, uh, if you want to be able to uh, move quickly on this code base. All right. See you next time. Bye-bye.